What's up, guys? Welcome to SPM Buzz. They call me super host Miss Kithenji, and today I'm hanging out with two talented artists, and we are going to be talking to them just to get to hear how they come together. What kind of music are they singing? So you need to stay tuned, or is it rapping? We are going to find out in a short while. You need to stay tuned so that you can get to listen to this story. Welcome, guys, to SPM Buzz. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the introduction. I mean, we all know you guys, but let's hear from you, your name. Is it something, is there, is there something else that you guys do different from music? Let's start with uh, Dr. Rain. Yeah, Wagwan. Well, so my name is Dr. Rain. I'm a consultant, pediatrician. I'm an artist, creative, um, many things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but here today because of the music. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm Asom Gavi, a sound engineer, producer, artist in general. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, guys, I had to ask how he pronounces his name. You said Asom. It's Asom, yes. Asom. Yeah. But on that poster, you guys have written Awesome and Rain. Yeah. So tell us about that creative aspect that came up with now Awesome and Rain. Oh, the Asom beat is actually still awesome. Mm -hmm. Because it, it usually encompasses everything, awesome, a sum, like a, a sum of everything in maths, and awesome. Yeah. It started from the awesome. So the awesome bit is where we just played around with it with the awesome rain. Mm -hmm. And it's an awesome rain of hip hop. It's been oh. an awesome rain of hip hop. Mm -hmm. The hip hop 50 thing. That's why we came up with the album thing. Oh, yeah. talk of creativity. Now, I'm also interested to know how did you guys link up to a point of doing an entire album together? Yeah, so basically I was getting back to music. Um, as Isam has said, Isam is, a, is on top of being a very dope rap artist. He's also a sound engineer. So I hit him up just to work on some stuff. Some of my singles, I was trying to make a comeback now into music. Um, and then that's how it started. So when we were recording, um, I think the first song we recorded was Run It Up. So when we did that, um, I could see, I could sense that he's feeling like the beats that I have, some of the songs that I was working on. Um, and I was like, you know, if you're feeling it, um, on that particular record, since there's only one verse, you can go ahead, do the verse. So yeah, that's how we started. And he, he did an amazing job with the verse. Then we just got to click, we got to know each other. Um, we realized that our vision was sort of aligned and it was also the year of, you know, hip hop turning 50 years. So there was a lot of us trying to tap into generally this, this art of music that we really, really love. Mm -hmm. And it just started out like that. And then it was one song, two songs. Then it was like a whole album. An album. Yeah. Oh, how was it when now um, he sort of felt now, well, we have chemistry and we can work on this. Whose proposal was it to do more and more and more and more? I think it was like, uh, you know how you, you say something that's in the mind of the other person, mm -hmm. where you just like, by the way, we, sh we really need to add more of these uh, songs and all that. So it, it was like a general consensus between us, where we were like, we should actually do more and more. Mm -hmm. And over time, that's what happened. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've seen Dr. Reigns, you know, a few singles here and there over the time, over the years. Do you have more music? Yeah, I have a whole catalogue of albums. Mm -hmm. I have 15 plus albums, mix mm -hmm. projects, I call them projects, because mm -hmm. albums is a very broad, it's a specific term. So I have many projects, 15 plus to be exact. Uh, yeah. Ah. Is this your first album? Um, it's my first, yeah, I would say, mm -hmm. in, in, in Kenya, yes, f after a very long time. The f I don't think I've ever released an album since I came back. Um, th my first, first uh, project was in Russia, mm -hmm. so it was released there, and then after that, when I came to Kenya, it was just like singles. And it's also my first like time putting out like a whole collection of we've curated like a whole album together, piece by piece uh, since since I got to music in Kenya. So it's it's been a while because I haven't been doing music for like six years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We know you to do revolutionary music and I know even in this album you guys have one of those. 
do you ever come across comments of like no you should stick to actually just being a doctor leave the politics alone because we've seen the likes of uh, people like Njugush who is a comedian doing content in a um, satire sort of way criticizing the um, immorals the corruption of the government and he gets uh, people he gets comments of like you stick to comedy mm. have you gotten such comments and if yes or not what would you say to such people um yeah kind of i think not many honestly there's not many i think it's because gen z now is a more open-minded generation they're not old school so the people who are old school still don't understand how you know a consultant a medical consultant or specialist could be doing music um mm. to them it's like you're not taking your profession seriously, seriously. but uh, music is just a reflection of myself the same way i portray myself on social media whether i'm doing health stuff whether i'm doing digital activism which is something that i've been doing for for a long time it's just the same the same stuff i talk about on twitter in terms of activism the same thing i talk about health is the same thing you'd find in the music mm -hmm. yeah the stance stance the album do you have a favorite song in there Oh, square T. Oh, hey, I love all of them. Do you have a favorite so far? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, which one? Okay, uh, I'll go with Walk Like I Walk. Okay. Yeah. Why is that? It speaks on like, uh, I walk like I walk. It's my day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. This is all like, this is all I do. So the way I move, like breathing, my music is that to me. It's it's my day-to-day -day life. It's it's life. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Do you have a favorite one? Well, wow, it's it's so tricky because it's one of those things where you have so many favorites. Mm -hmm. But I would say um, top would be out out my melanin, where we really talk about what's going on. Um, you know, basically the same political issues that we have. We talk about um, neo-colonialism. We talk about how the government isn't really doing much. Just the the things that led to the protest. So it's a very um, prophetic song in the sense that we did it even before protests had started but it kind of sparked a revolution mm -hmm. um and then there's also one that's very dear to me it's called kazi um because on that particular record um i have another doctor who's on it called dr j mm -hmm. and we're talking about the struggles in healthcare like you can see right now with the situation with um, a lot of doctors are not employed there's an issue with the medical interns. They were not getting hired. They're not being paid. So it's just about the struggle of the reality of healthcare and being a doctor and the challenges you face. So mm -hmm. those those two, and I would say the third would be Simba featuring Kolo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those Why are my top Simba? three. Uh, one because um, Kolo to both of us is is such a, a legend. Yeah, in in hip hop. So just having him. Uh, being able to to share his art on you know for us to just collaborate on one track um the other fact is that lyrically um he really delivered everybody delivered on that record and yeah it's it's one of those for people who like hip hop it's it's a statement it's like when you listen to everybody's verse on it you're like okay these guys know what they're doing mm -hmm. yeah how has been the reception, especially when it comes to the genre of hip hop? How would you describe that? It's and over the years when you've been doing this, how would you describe that? Hip hop is really growing nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, we can even see like the majority of music. Hip hop is the biggest genre right now in the world. Mm -hmm. So as as that grows, of course, in this country, it's I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in this country, it's 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 not as big as is in other countries but over time we can see many many artists come out with, with hip hop even urban tone gang all these so all these sounds come from hip hop yeah. they're just a branch of the main source which is hip hop mm -hmm. yeah does it ever you know demotivate you in the past the fact that you know you have to like work extra harder on this particular genre here in Kenya it it motivates me more because uh -huh. i feel i need to do a whole lot more for me to get the music where I need it to be. So it usually, you can't, you can't just uh, sit, sit back and just say, ah, I just did this. So you need to push, you see how we've been doing with Awesome Rain, the whole media tours and all this. It's actually been, I'm learning also in the process with all this, the media things and all this. And yeah, it's, mm. it's actually, it's progressing. Yeah. It's a progressing genre. Uh -huh. 
Now, Dr. Rain, you got married to one of the most talented singers we've had in this country for a very long time, Della. How was it committing to a fellow artist and how was it now just coming together and creating music at first? Because we didn't get to see you with, uh, you know, sort of many collabs, but I see on this particular album, there's also a collab with mm. Della. How was it committing to a fellow artist? Um, I think it was easy because, uh, as you know, Della is not really uh, doing much music now. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that we didn't get into it when she was in her prime mm -hmm. stuff. Oh, yeah. So I can't really say that oh, I had like a working. So it was it was really chill. Um, it's also very chill. Now she's a mom. She's she's taken a step back. Mm -hmm. um, it was very easy for her to end up on the project because, like I said, um, this album was recorded all recorded at the home studio. That's why um, ASAM was on board as a sound engineer. So it's one of those things where you've recorded a song and then you're like, okay, we need some vocals here. And mm -hmm. then you're like, ah, there's, there's a singer upstairs, you know? Yeah. It's a bit to a studio, kidogo, aweke, aweke, yeah, vocals and stuff like that. So it's, mm -hmm. it's been very easy. Ah. Yeah. Now, what is the inspiration behind that particular song that you guys have featured her? Um, so this, the song is called Watch, um, and the, we wrote that song, um, even the chorus, the three of us, it was myself, Isam Gavi, and uh, a friend of mine called Dr. Musa Goose, um, who is also a, a medical doctor, by the way. So just, it's the heavy influence of basketball. Um, we really gave uh, Steph you know, Steph Curry, his, his flowers. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about, you know, um, from a point of, you know how you have basketball stars, you have Steph Curry who is like really, really good. But we're talking about ourselves um, lyrically. Um, where do we fit in and w where do we place ourselves? So we're like, yeah, we're like more like, you know, Steph Curry, we don't miss when we, sh when we shoot, we don't miss when it comes to the lyrics, the rhymes, we don't miss. So it was, it was one of those things where we, we, we are passionate, we, we love basketball, and just put those together. Yeah, very good. You want to and uh, yeah, as we also say in the hook, it's watch, just watch. Mm -hmm. Just watch as I make this shot, because we're telling you, like, you just doubt us, yes, but you'll see when we take our shots, we'll, we'll get the bucket. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Awesome. Now I want to know where are we going to see this album? Where can we stream the music? Uh, Spotify, up, uh, all the streaming platforms, it's available. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can if you want to purchase the album. Also, you can contact us directly. You can get the copy by. Uh, yeah, you can yeah. get a copy. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Do we have any visual out as of yet? Yeah, definitely. So? We have um, our intro. Wagwan is out on YouTube. It was um, shot and directed by CJ Pixels and KG Brian. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure that you go check out the, the video on YouTube, Gongeni Streams. And yeah, it's, it's a, a very beautiful hip hop album. I actually wanted to add what you're asking about hip hop um, just being the genre mm -hmm. in, in Africa. It seems like if you look at even the events here, we don't really have a lot of hip hop headliners. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, is that hip hop is something that is most um, consumed in Africa. Like even when you look at the way we dress, the way our culture is, all our shoes, all our um, dress code is all influenced by hip hop. It's just that we're in a time where Afrobeat is really going global. Mm -hmm. um, now we have Ama Piano and, and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, um, what we're doing with this album, we, we like to call it luxury rap. Um, it's type not for everyone. Yeah, this is this is hip hop, but we're just breaking the barriers because hip hop here seems to be that genre associated with, um, okay, maybe even with Violence. reggae. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, people tend to think that guys who listen to hip hop don't have um, consumer power. Okay. Um, in terms of even when you look at the branding, if you look at um, the type of things that are put behind and, and, and the push that you need mm -hmm. in terms of corporate involvement and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's one of those things where we're like, look, hip hop is big, hip hop has its niche. Um, this is luxury rap, hence um, the, the type of brands that we're collaborating with when we did the listening party and have brands like Martel, 
which are you know these are premium um, you know luxury kind of uh, brands and beverages so just showing people I want to just show guys that guys you know we, we can fit in you know you can fit into into different corporate schemes you can you can actually push the music people can make money out of hip-hop yeah, yeah. absolutely um, as we wind up let us know where do we find you on social media and also please talk to your fans <laughs> Um, you can find me on all platforms as Asam Gavi. That's A S U M G A R V E Y. And to the fans, thank you for always streaming. Thank you for listening to the music. It's always an awesome rain. Yes. I love that. Let me ask you the one last question. After this album, given a chance to collaborate with a with an hip hop artist, mm -hmm. who would you pick here in Kenya? In Kenya. Yes. I think I've collaborated with most of the guys I like. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd say, mm -hmm. I repeat, mm -hmm. okay, let me s just say uh, I love Nyash's music, okay. yeah, I, I think Nyash is, is a good go. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Dr. Rain, as we wind up, let me also ask about the revolutionary music. You know, it comes with a lot of criticism, sometimes instilling fear. Do you ever feel that way before you release a song? Because this, the other one that you collaborated with, uh, is it Giuliani? No, who was this, this, this song that you, the last one you released? Was it a collabo? But it was a, no, this, this song that you, uh, during the Mandamano, it was released during the Mandamano. Do you ever feel that fear of maybe let's hold back? Mm -hmm. No, I've always been very outspoken. Um, and that's like, it's just a reflection of myself. Okay. I've always been very vocal. It's my activism started with you know, just exposing the weak healthcare system, the fragile healthcare system, um, because that's what I was exposed to, and I felt like, you know, you need to speak out. I've always been vocal about that. Um, I try to be fearless as much as possible, um, using the music this time. I mean, we went for the protests, we participated in the reject finance bill protests. We've been trying to be as active as possible, but we felt, let's use our art, um, the song you're talking about is called Inchietu. Yeah. Um, it's produced by Dili, the producer. It's just me and Asa Monet, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, basically, it just talked about we, we recorded our verses like, um, you know, after Rex died um, during, during the, the yeah. protests. Yeah. So it's just one of those things. It's an expression of self, mm -hmm. it's, it's just speaking reality. Um, we felt there's, I mean, there's, there's enough songs about, you know, dancing and having a good time and mm -hmm. drinking and all that. And, and you know, those, there's time for that. Yeah. But we felt there's still a gap, like not many people are speaking about, mm -hmm. you know, what's really going on, what's, what's the reality. So I like to do very real music that is relatable. Um, I don't like capping too much. I'm also not in the era of like, you know, always, pa I don't go out like so much. I'm Nimetulia Kidogo, but... Yeah, man. So I just wanted to to express um, our true, genuine selves and and be like a mirror reflection of what are guys really going through. Yeah. What are people talking about? What's going on with healthcare? What's going on with Sha Shif? Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and put it in the music. Yeah. And talking about that, you are a doctor. You have first-hand experience of the Sha and the NHIF. Which one do you think is better? Do you think Sha is a better option? Uh, I just think the whole uh, Shah moving from NHF is more of a political, you know, thing, agenda, mm -hmm. where people just wanted to tick the boxes. Mm -hmm. I do believe in universal health care coverage and it being very important for the people, mm -hmm. but the way that they rolled it out, you could see that it was not coming from a genuine point of wanting to help Kenyans, but rather of like ticking boxes. Okay, we've gotten this, this was our manifesto, or this was our plan, and we're just going to push it along because of course all of those deals have um, people who benefit from it you know like if you look at what they're talking about a hundred and something billion going to just set up the systems it's extremely sad for me I've experienced it myself where mm -hmm. you know you you're seeing patients and they can't be admitted because you're waiting for approvals approvals are not going through so it's extremely sad to watch Kenyans um, suffer mm -hmm. yet before when they had NHIF they were still getting sorted so yeah. 
I would say they just needed to give it time. To, it's like a proper handover, Transition, you know? Yeah. yeah, do a pilot of it in one county and say, okay, we've tried Shire in Nairobi County or Nakuru County. Mm -hmm. Let's try it now in six counties. Like that, just transition. It, I think it's not a bad, the thought behind it is not a bad thing. It's just the way they implement things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I hope the government officials responsible are listening to this because I believe that is positive criticism. All right, Dr. Rain, please tell people where to find you and what you'd like to tell your fans. Um, so, yeah, I'm on mainly on Instagram. You can find me on ins Instagram, Dr. Rain, D-O-C-T-O-R-R-E-I-G-N. That's my IG. That's also the handle for TikTok. That's where you'll find me. And Dr. Rain is the guy you'll find. Today I'm talking about healthcare. I'm talking about the polio vaccine. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow I'm promoting my album. So my my mantra or my my thing is i'm just here to motivate the young guys out there just to know that just because you're a professional doesn't mean you can't have a creative side you can't have a side where you do other things be it creative be it music like you can do anything that you put your your mind to um in terms of healthcare, um dr rain you can actually come to my clinic if you have kids um vaccines and stuff like that. I'm based in Upper Hill. Um, if you go to my Instagram, to TikTok, you can get the contacts so you can book a consultation with me. Um, yeah, and YouTube, go check out YouTube, um, Wagwan, the new music video. I'm also on X, though I'm taking a break from X um, this November. I don't want to do any <laughs> X post, <stuff>. yes, mm -hmm. Men <laughs> mental health awareness this month. So yeah. X is a bit crazy. Yeah. yeah. Is that your most toxic app? Yeah, it's definite. It's one of the most toxic apps, but it's also the the app currently that my fastest growing social media is is on X. Oh, okay. But it's it's very yeah, it's very you always have to fight people and stuff like that. So sometimes it's like eh, this is just a bit too toxic for yeah. me. Mm -hmm. um, s and right now, where I really got back to it because of you know the protests and things like that, and now I feel like. Um, the energy has shifted. Now it's like everybody's just fighting against each other instead of us fighting the power, you know. So yeah. it's we're just taking cheap shots at each other, looking for scapegoats instead of like, okay, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, guys, that was a very good conversation. I hope you guys go stream Stunts, the album by Awesome and Dr. Rain. Now we're going to have a, a performance, you know, from you guys. I'm sure, are you guys performing Wagwan or which one are you guys going to perform for us? So stay tuned for that. But thank you very much for watching this episode of this interview. Until next time, my good name is Miss Ketinji. Goodbye. Yeah, but, but, but.